Hi to all. Welcome to another simple tutorial on seaweed fertilizers. And this video will cover all nutritional benefits of seaweed on hoyas and orchids, how often to use them, and ramifications of overuse. And as per the name itself, these fertilizers are made of seaweed, algae or kelp extracts of red, brown or green algae found from the sea or the oceans. And it is the most magical elixir a plant can receive. Seaweed as a fertilizer includes macro and micronutrients, humic acids, phytohormones, osmoprotectants and amino acids. And because of all those nutrient factors and their performances, a seaweed fertilizer will ease the intake of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium to your plant, improve the capability for pest resistance of a plant, enhance the chlorophyll, carotenoid production and water retention, making plants more shiny and healthy, improve energy storage in plants for a balanced growing opportunity, reduces transplant shock in shipping, handling and repotting, improves the tolerance of weather changes, increase leaf surface area and increase sugar content, also increases the moisture and nutritional retention of soil. There's a lot of information online about soil conditioning abilities of seaweed fertilizer but for this video I will stick to the fertilization side of seaweed for your use. How should you utilize seaweed fertilizer on your hoyas and orchids? Well, this is a very subjective matter based on the preference of an individual. But as far as I'm concerned, if using for the first time, I will definitely resort to making a very weak solution for my plants. This is my golden rule in trying out a new fertilizer or growing a new plant for the very first time. And simply putting, there is no definite rule that you have to spray the seaweed or kelp fertilizer on two separate occasions without mixing it with your regular NPK mix as it is tried and tested that either way you spray it, your plant will absorb it and receive the full benefits of the make of your seaweed fertilizer has to offer. Now we come to the conundrum of how to choose one. Well, there are so many brands coming into the market every day, but it's worth to read the product reviews, read the ingredients of the fertilizer, check your plant's needs, your growing conditions, and choose a fertilizer from your own region for easy access the next time. What happens if we spray too much of seaweed? As they say, too much of anything is good for nothing. When it comes to fertilizer, weekly, weekly is the way to go. Too much of nutrients will result in mutated structures or halt the plant's growth altogether and too much of hormones in a plant in return will take a lengthy period to come out of the plant too and until then all other fertilizers will also have to seize on plants to stop an already existing situation from heightening. To summarize Use a good kelp or seaweed fertilizer which has made a name in the market or if you want to try out a new make, 
read the contents and the genuine reviews it has received. Read the instructions before usage. Understand your needs in comparison to your work times and find a specific time for fertilization which you can develop a consistency to give your plant a balanced nutrition all year round. Treat other problems like pests or funguses before thinking of fertilization. And finally, start with a weak spray of the solution and gradually increase to its labeled dilution instructions. Seaweed is purely organic, therefore choose a fertilizer not only saves your plants but you and your planet too. And every good deed will be rewarded one day. Even if it doesn't, you leave a planet a bit safer by going organic as much as possible. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. If there are questions, please do let me know. I love you all. Stay safe. Bye-bye.